Hey, it's Dean Gemmel, the host of The Whole Spiel from USA Curling. And you're about to hear another episode that features the words Nashville, two-time pro bowler, and dedicated curling facility all together at once. It's crazy. But before we get started, I want to talk about the National Five and Under Championships that is now part of the official USA Curling Championship calendar. Now, the idea for this event was hatched a few years ago when 2018 Olympic gold medalist John Schuster and Southern California curling leader Matt Gamboa had a conversation at a USA Curling meeting. The USWCA, the U.S. Women's Curling Association, worked with USA Curling in an ad hoc Grow the Sport committee, and there were two great five and under national events. And we are grateful for the support of all who helped to launch this event successfully. This year, though, we want to make it an official part of the USA Curling National Championship calendar, and we couldn't be more excited to do it. Here are some of the details you should know. The scheduled date for this event is May 12th to May 15th, 2022 at the Southern California Curling Center. The 5 and Under National Championship is for players with five years of curling experience or less. It is open to players of every level of ability, including but not limited to stick and wheelchair curlers. This is an open event. Teams can be made up of any combination of players of any gender identity. We're using calendar years for curling experience. Anyone who started curling in January 2016 or later is eligible to compete in the 2022 National Five and Under Championship. Fewer than 10 games in a calendar year will not count as a year of curling experience, but we hope that the spirit of curling will prevail among participants and competitors will be honest about their own qualifications. Because of all the COVID-related club closures, 2020 will not be counted as a year of curling experience for anyone, whether your club was open or not. Teams will qualify from selected five and under bond spiels held across the country. If you run a spiel and want it to be considered as a national qualifier, please go to usacurling.org and click on the link that lets you register your spiel so your event will be considered in the application process. We will establish the final list of qualifier bond spiels on November 7th, so submit your event as soon as possible. Ensuring five and under eligibility of competitors will be the responsibility of bond spiel conveners. Competitors in the five and under national championship will be required to be dues-paying members of a USA curling member club. The entry fee for this national championship will be $500 per team, This entry fee is separate and unrelated to the bond spiel fees of qualifier events. Teams who earned spots when the event was canceled in 2020 will be included if they want to compete in 2022. Please email me, dean.gemmel, G-E-M-M-E-L-L, at usacurling.org with the details on the event that qualified your team in 2020. Now, uh, let's get to this episode. You're listening to The Whole Spiel, a podcast from USA Curling that puts the spotlight on people who curl in the United States, people who are building the sport, and people who just flat out love it. In this episode, we have a conversation with the director of curling at T-Line of Nashville and the former NFL quarterback who made this new facility happen. From T-Line in Nashville, my guests on this episode are two-time pro bowler and curler Mark Bulger and the T-Line director of Carl and the T-Line director of curling Carl Biltz. Gentlemen, welcome to the whole spiel. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Hey guys, yeah, if and I'm going to say to anyone who's listening on one of a, a podcasting application, you should check out the YouTube feed of this as well to see the great facility that uh that they've they've championed down there in nashville it's uh, we have a great perspective of it carl i'm going to start with mark because that's the celebrity culture we live in here and uh you know mark some listeners uh may know you uh football fans will certainly know you from successful seasons with the st louis rams curling fans will know you from your uh, effort with jared allen Michael Ruse and Keith Bullock to try to train and get good enough to go to the Olympic Games. Um, full disclosure here, Mark, when you guys announced that as a former elite curler, I cheered against you every single game. I really, 
<laughs> I have to admit that. No. Now I now I feel bad about it. I have to apologize because I've since met Jared Allen. I love his respect for the game, the commitment he's making, and now here you are, uh, champ. You know, building this great facility in Nashville. So I apologize for that up front. But let's start by what you learned on that journey when you went and curled in exotic places like Eveleth, Minnesota. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jared. He he definitely set the bar pretty high for us, and I I respect that you uh, were rooting against us. I did the same in the NFL. So <laughs> we uh, we, we Everless and Fargo. We used to train in Blaine a lot. Uh, everywhere you know up there and we got to meet the community and the more we met the actual players um we got in play the, the respect we we gained um for the sport um became contagious and we're addicted now and obviously in nashville you know our, our families got sick of us traveling to I, we love it up there uh, right. but just traveling every two weeks it's just a, a little much with we all most of us have kids um, and so i said let's bring it to nashville and so i had this vision one night my wife thought i was crazy three years ago and here we are i think you'll enjoy it i got i think i would say one of the top three ice guys and, you know some might argue in the country right now but the ice is i was curling last night and it was uh it was humming <laughs> that's fantastic and curling. Yeah. Yeah. And curling. That's um, I mean, look, it looks great. And, uh, you know, one of the things I want to ask you real quick, Mark, is not real quick, but, um, you know, so you you were engaged in curling. You met the community. And, and actually, all I heard back from from other curlers that I, that I know well was that was positive about you guys. And um, but uh, what what did you see? I mean, this is a business for you. And, and what did you see as the real business opportunity in curling? Again, I'll piggyback off of your point that uh, the, the community was great, you know, Smitty, and you, you know the whole crew. I mean, it's a small-knit uh, yeah. community, and everyone was so welcoming. That, that's what I was surprised about. I thought if you were rooting against us, and I know you, most of them probably were, they were very, uh, you know, welcoming and learning rules like if you lose – you know, the winners buy you beer and the winners sweep the ice. I don't get that part. <laughs> and good curling, it's one of our signs. Right when you come in the door, it's the biggest sign of the whole building. It says good curling. It's a neon sign. Just the whole community. We, I don't want to change anything. I don't think Jared or, or Mike or, or Keith did. But uh, we're just thrilled to be around it. Um, I got to visit all those great locations, you know, Chaskin and all of them. And uh I try to put everything together into one. Um, I knew I had to have stadium seating like we're sitting in right now to have a, a look down on the ice. Um, and some people are hesitant to get on the ice, especially a little bit down here, more in the south. Sure. So I put bowling in. So we have bowling and, uh, you know, restaurant. I, so I just try to encompass everything, but focus on this. This is going to be the focus of the whole place. And that's why it's named Tila. Well, the, the great thing is when somebody calls you up and says they want to do an outing, you're the only place to go. They could go to other bowling alleys but I, I think the idea of having another thing they can be comfortable with is, is interesting one um, I'm going to throw it over to you Carl and give me a little uh, insight into what sort of curling programming you're planning in terms of like leagues and spiels and events uh, uh, what sort of things are, are you planning and is there anything you're doing a little different that might uh, spark an idea for another curling facility around the country well, for right now, we're, we're looking at using Mondays through Thursdays as league opportunities for the National Curling Club here. Um, they had an arena club to start with that I've, I've had the graciousness of, of meeting a lot of them. And they're, they're all, they're jump, chomping at the bit to get out here on the ice and, and play more. Um, we, we plan on doing our first bond spiel of, towards the end of January. We haven't set down a, a, a hard date yet, but we do that in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I plan on trying to get hopefully four or five spiels a year down here and since we're going to have ice in the summers I, I think we should take full advantage of it because we're one of the few facilities that's going to have dedicated ice in the summer and host a couple tournaments and we'll get those going pretty quick because I don't think we're going to have any problems getting people to come down on that end. Oh well, yeah as I mentioned to you and in, in previous conversations I love Nashville I was there for the first time just uh, maybe a year before the shutdown of our lives but um, and I know uh, Mark and I share a similar uh, 
uh, uh, a like for a uh, John Prine song in spite of ourselves that we both yes, used to spite realize. Ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed John Prine by one week at the Ryman and I regret it uh, still. Oh, right. I'd love to get back down there to, to hear some music and listen to the uh, uh, and, and do some curling. Um, what about uh, uh, do you, what about events, Carl? Like corporate events and, and private events. How much of that do you see driving your business? And, and do you do how do you plan to run those? Uh, we plan on doing uh, on weekends, on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. We're going to do hour long rentals with a fifteen minute crash course on how to curl, and then let them let them, let them get out there, throw some rocks, get to get to experience an end or two, so they get a good feel for the game. Um, then with the corporate events, we're gonna we're gonna work with the restaurant and the bowling and see what we can do to have either a two or three hour rental, depending on what they want to do here in the facility when it comes to those kind of things. I love those one hour sessions. We have a USA curling intro learn to curl model that uses that one hour real quick get people playing games as quickly as you can mark when you as an outsider to the game mark i want to you know when you came in and looked at it and you, you, you know I, I know you love the community and everything else but were there things you saw as an outsider because i think sometimes we get a little myopic in curling and we we don't uh, really see see everything Did you see what sort of opportunities do you see to sort of grow the game or advance the game yeah, I, I do think that the, the good thing about it is it's it's co-ed. That was right. one thing I saw instantly. That's 51% of the population. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, Carl had to teach my daughters how to curl the other day and her friends. But they're, you know, 11-year-olds, they're curling, so it's kid-friendly too. Uh, just safe. Safety's number one when, when people get on the ice. But, you know, I, people think it's really easy. It looks really easy when people watch it once a year. Uh, during the, or once every four years during the Olympics, then they get on the ice and they realize this isn't so easy. Uh, I'm still sore from curling yesterday again. I've uh, been curling way too much lately and my legs are, I'm getting too old for this, but uh, people realize that and it's addictive though. It, it's such a fun sport. It's, you know, instead of golf, you're out there. I love golf, but it's five, six, seven hours. We don't have to worry about the weather. Right. Hey, it's cold in there. I could care less, but wear a sweatshirt, but it's not going to rain on you. Um, there's just so many advantages to curling. And again, I think the the people around the sport are so supportive and uh, welcoming and uh, the etiquette is it's, it's great. And I don't know, all around, I never thought a million years ago uh, or four years ago, I would be doing this right now but uh that's was that's that really how much your, i love the sport. Called, that was your first intro to curling right you like I never curled my life i have ice skated and played hockey uh right growing up but um, grew up in pennsylvania first right? was, i mean first was badminton he wanted to go to the olympics and i watched yeah. that for two days i said no <laughs> and then uh he said curling and this was before we won the gold medal and uh all of a sudden we're with john benton up in Blaine, minnesota for half the month and i go what the heck did i get myself into here <laughs> now here we are with this i i will say that with your uh your athletic dna our junior curling uh high performance people will probably want to have a look at how your daughter's look on the ice but um uh hey carl now you're relatively new to the game as well carl you started curling at the triangle club in raleigh durham north carolina one of my favorite uh places to go great people but um uh i think you're even still eligible for our new national five and under right so so w tell me about your journey in the sport well, I've been I've been curling for about six years, and thanks to COVID, I do have a fifth year option you go, Nick, this year. Yes, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a couple under fives this year while I still have the chance. Uh, I've had a lot of fun doing it. I got into it from my uh, one buddy in uh, Raleigh who was uh, from Arizona, and they joked that they got the kid from Alabama on the ice because I'm I, I was raised in Huntsville, Alabama. So got a chance to go out there and play. Had a great time. Then uh, my second second season I started helping out with ice and then uh, I had the luxury of uh, I made a little bit of Bitcoin money and I took three years off of working and all I did was curl and did ice so I learned a lot about the sport doing that and I, I've, I've really had a great journey in, in growing up in the sport in the last five or six years and, and meeting a lot of the great people at least on the east coast I have aspirations to go further west and up north to Canada yet but I'll get up there soon enough <laughs> talk about things falling into place we get uh, Bulger here 
starts curling because uh, Jared Allen gets this crazy idea, and you're devote three years of your life to it because of Bitcoin. This is like, this is things yeah. behind. How about, this, how about to get some investment? I do not, not just uh, advice on the ice. Wow. All right. Yeah. Let yeah, me know what the exactly. are this morning. Did you just <laughs> learn that, Mark? Did you just learn that he had some Bitcoin money floating around? I don't know about That's that. Nice. Maybe I'm overpaying him. I, I was just going to say you might want to revisit your salary structure. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, I, I know Nashville is a big uh, food town too. I love the love the food there, and your 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 uh, website says curling food, live music, drinks, bowling. But uh, what sort of food can we expect to find at Tea Line? We have a um, a great chef, uh, Joshua, that uh, we invited over to to work here. Uh, he, okay. he was a great restaurant for six years, and it, it's not going to be a sit down gourmet meal. It's, it's, right. Definitely bar food. It's wings, but uh, he's. I think yeah, he's spiced it up. It up a, it's a it's a lot better, and um, he's unbelievable. We've had a, a couple soft openings already, and uh, he's amazing. I got lucky to get him. I got lucky to get Carl. I got my CFO from Pittsburgh. She came over, and then my GM. I don't want to say the name, <laughs> but he came over too. So we have a great team here. Uh, when, when, when people come here, they're going to, and in Nashville in general is it's like the curling community. The people are awesome. And, uh, I'm not going to guarantee. I never like to guarantee, but I'm pretty sure you'll have a great time if, if anyone visits Key Line. It's tough not to have a great time in Nashville. Any of your places, hot chicken going to be on the menu? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Some hot chicken. I'm interested to see the effects when uh, there's a Wisconsin team playing Sunday morning, the effects of hot chicken on them out in the playing area might make for some <laughs> interesting dynamics yeah, have, out there. Uh, yeah. I, okay. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> you, have to, you have to give a warning to the people who have only eaten cheese curds their whole life. And I love that. Yeah. We got good pork rinds, too, though. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. Good. Great All pork right. rinds. Um, last thing, I think, um, t- tell me uh, sort of what the interest has been and when your grand opening is. I think your grand opening is what next week, but but fill me in a little bit on the level of, of excitement and interest you've had so far, and when you're when you're officially open. Yeah, I'll let Charles finish in a little bit, but uh, yeah, we're we've had a, a couple soft openings. We're having a couple this weekend, um, but next Friday, uh, what date is that? Uh, I want to say it's the twenty third. Okay, so probably the twenty third next Friday. Uh, that's the grand grand opening. I think we're going to have you know the politicians and uh, a lot of musicians again. National, believe it or not, there's music here. Um, yeah, <laughs> but we've had. Really, really big artists. I don't want to give their names and speak out of turn, but uh, I think everyone recognizes a lot of the names who already have a pretty big interest who I'm friends with that are going to be here. So you never know who you will see back here or just on site. And uh, they don't have to get on an airplane to do it here. And there's there's plenty of them, athletes and musicians in Nashville. So uh, it's going to be pretty to add on. Well, it's, I, just real quick, that's going to be pretty exciting. That the music scene. I mean, I'm a I'm a fan of country music, uh, probably more of the John Prine stuff than anything, but I like it. And I know there's a lot of curling fans who love it. I also know there's a great stand up comedian down there, Nate Bargetzi. Uh, one of my favorite comedians is a Nashville guy. So, uh, Carl, you finish up with what else uh, you're experiencing so far and, and what you're expecting after the grand opening. Theo, Theo Vaughn's a buddy, too. So, you, oh, you yeah. like Theo? Yeah, no, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm imagining I'll, I'll a stand up for him. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, I, I've had a lot of interest from all clubs all over the country and, and uh, several in Canada have actually reached out to me. I've had a bunch of different ice makers and, and different uh, presidents of clubs reach out about when we're going to have tournaments and things like that. And I'm really excited because I think I, I don't think we're going to have any problems filling any, but any spots for anything and getting people out here. I think it's really going to grow the sport down here in, in Nashville and the South in general, because being like the fourth dedicated club down down south of the Mason Dixon line, I think it's going to be really a great thing for us so and being in nashville and in, in pretty much a hub of the central country we're, we're really easy to get to for a lot of places and i think that's just going to grow what's going on here as well as around the country and that kind of thing yeah i see great opportunities for curling in the south the clubs in charlotte and uh and and raleigh durham the two of my favorites and uh i'm excited to have an opportunity to come and curl in in nashville um so uh, full credit to both you guys and especially mark to you i know you sort of had to soldier on through a through a pandemic and some other things that probably made it more challenging than it could have been 
But uh, full credit to you, and, and thanks very much, guys, for your time. And I look forward to coming down and uh, curling in that beautiful, beautiful facility behind you. Uh, Dean, we appreciate your support, and uh, we look forward to, to having you here. And uh, we'll get our team together. You bring one, and we'll, 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 see, we'll, we'll see what, what we can do. Match. <laughs> I did tell Carmen last time I can bring the brush like a badass clinic down there. Yes. I can bring the brush <laughs> like a badass clinic. I can. Uh, we can. We can do some other USA curling clinics with do it down there. So I look forward to that. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. That was Mark Bulger and Carl Bilch from T-Line of Nashville on the whole spiel. To find out more about their new facility, let Google be your friend and check out their Instagram feed and website. I'm Dean Gemmel, Director of Curling Development at USA Curling, and I hope you'll reach out to me with suggestions for future episodes or to share ideas that can help grow our game. Email me at dean.gemmel at usacurling.org. And remember to visit the USA Curling website to find news, get results, watch web streams, or check out some of the latest USA Curling merchandise and apparel. Be a member, be a supporter, be a fan, but stay involved in the sport you love. 